Hey, it's Coach K, and a lot of you have been asking for more bucket pieces, and particularly how to teach them. So here we are. I've been creating a lot more music, and some of it is rote, and so that means that when we teach it to people, it's not through reading music, it's through you know speaking it or saying it or modeling it, and then having them repeat it and play it back. And this can be a really fun way to learn things and to teach things, and to play some things that are a little bit more difficult to read, but totally playable, and it can be a lot of fun. And this other curriculum I've been creating is geared more toward the educational side of things. This is getting kids to read music, getting kids to play with proper percussion techniques. This is um, learning new warm-ups and exercises, and really doing it in a fun way for the kids, but also in a very cheap and cost-effective way on buckets and trash cans. So this curriculum comes in a package of worksheets, which are basically a foolproof plan to get your students prepared to play the actual piece, while still internalizing and understanding the musical concepts that the piece is built on. And also it, cr it includes videos, like what you're about to see right now, of me giving the instruction. And this is either for you to show to your kids, you know, if you don't know anything about music and you just want them to be able to do something, pop in the video and that's that and let them go to it. Or you can watch it and get some teaching tips yourself and then reproduce it and become the coolest teacher ever because you just taught kids how to have a lot of fun on buckets and you did it in a very cheap way which keeps other people happy. So, um, what you're going to see right now is a new bucket piece called Hey and this is a sneak peek into the worksheet number one that would lead up to the actual piece at the end as well as the teaching instruction from me. So I hope that you enjoy. If you want to skip all of this and get the more information, all you need to do is go below this video on YouTube. Um, of course, I'll give more information at the end, so let's jump in. Hey, it's Coach K, and today we're going to play Hey. No, really, that's the name of the piece. Hey. Okay. Go ahead and make sure that you have your sticks and either a practice pad or a bucket or trash can or drum or whatever you're going to be playing on today, and let's get started. If you look at the top of worksheet number one, which looks like this, and you should have that in front of you as well, or maybe up on a projector somewhere, we see where it says warm up, eight on a hand. Now go ahead and look at the first row of music that you see. Can you guess why this is called eight on a hand? Exactly, because you're playing eight notes on each hand. Count them with me. Right, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Left, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Excellent. Now keep following along because we're not playing yet. We want to look at this. We're going to play the first two measures, which is the set of right and the set of left, a total of four times. So that would be a total of eight measures because we're playing those two measures times four. At the end, we're going to play that release note. You see that extra note there with the arrow that says release note? A release note just means, and we're done. So you're ending, you're playing your last set of left hand, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you're done. You play that release on your right hand to just kind of cap it off and say, huh. and then we all know that we're done together. So let's go ahead and play that in the air together. Again, I said in the air. Get out your sticks and here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, count with me. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, left, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, left, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, last two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, release. Oh, did you count? Did you get that release note? Okay, we're going to try it again. Make sure that you get that release note next time. But right now we're going to talk about the next thing we're going to focus on when we play it. Now this exercise is an excellent way to practice your full strokes. And basically what that means is that they're smooth and connected. And you start with your hand down, you come all the way back up, play a full extension, see how it's straight up and down, and you bring it back down, but it's nice and smooth and connected. This would be short and separate. We don't want it like that. We want it nice and smooth and connected. And part of the way that we do that is when we come up, we use our wrist, but then to go all the see how we're not at a full extension yet? We bring our wrist up as far as it can go, and then we open our fingers just a little bit like that. We keep the fingers on the stick, but we open them up so that it can go all the way up. And we put our fingers and our wrists together, and bam, we've got a full extension. So when we practice this next time, we're going to do it on the buckets, and you're going to be practicing keeping that really smooth motion on the bucket, 
and using that full extension while you play. You're going to play this on the center of the bucket. You're going to focus on, remember, that release note at the end in case you missed it this time. And full extensions when you play. Here we go, on the bucket in the center. One, two, one, two, three, four. extensions. Did you remember to focus on the full extensions using your wrist and then opening your fingers to get it all the way up? Okay, next time keep focusing on those things and really every time from now on you're going to want to make sure that when you play something like eight on a hand where you have the same thing over and over and over on one hand you're going to use that full extension so you can play it all the way through using your fingers and your wrist and then the release note is just nice and pretty at the end. Now I'm going to show you a trick in case you felt like you were going too slow or maybe you weren't with the group or not everybody sounded like they were together. Where most people mess up, and by most people I mean just about everybody, where they mess up is the transition from right to left or left to right. So the way that we practice this and make sure that we get a really nice transition because you want the same amount of space between every note, whether it's on your right hand or if you're switching to your left, is if you practice the 8 plus 1 like this. Just watch me this time, don't play. One, two, What happens to a lot of people, and this next one is incorrect, is this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because they forget to get ready for that one. But watch what I do with my left hand on the eighth stroke. See if you can find it. Ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did you catch it? I'll do it again. Ready, and. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I lift my left hand to get ready to play on one. What happens that makes people slow is when they go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then they're like, oh crud, I'm supposed to play with my left hand now. Let me lift it and then put it down. And by the time you've lifted it and put it down, you're already late. So the way that you get used to that transition is by practicing it nice and slow, probably going home and practicing and going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up, down. And so that's all you got to practice, okay? That'll cure all of your transition problems. Now, that kind of brings me to the next thing that we're going to try when we repeat this eight on a hand exercise again. And that is making it look nice. Because you can play it like this. And whatever, you know, anyone can play it like that. But the way you make it look nice is by keeping the hand you're not using down while it's not playing. Like this. Now, I guarantee you, the first time you try this, you're not going to be pro. You'll probably get like one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, I need to bring it down. That's fine. Just every time, you're going to keep focusing on that. So now we have a couple things to focus on. Making sure you get that release note at the end because you counted the whole time. Making sure you're playing with nice, smooth, full strokes. And now we're going to work on focusing on keeping that other hand we're not using down while we play this. Are you going to be perfect? Probably not. But that's okay. It's all about getting better every single time you play it. So here we go. Eight on a hand together. We're going to go a little bit faster, focusing on all those things we just talked about. Here we go. One, two, one, and two, and ready, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down. Down. in there, I actually messed up when I was doing my counting. I said four early, but because I was paying attention to everything that was going on, I recognized it was like, oh, and I didn't freak out. I didn't stop playing. I didn't say, oh, teacher, I messed up. All I did was like, oops, and I kept playing, and then I said four when it came. So I don't know if you caught that or not, but that's the way that we deal with mistakes as musicians, because you want to know the secret? Most people have no idea if you made a mistake. And if you just keep going, they're like, yeah, it was great. They have no clue because most people don't know a lot about music. But if you mess up, and even if it's something as simple as saying the wrong number when you're counting, and you're like, oh, no, oh, oh, no, I have to start over. Oh, no, oh, me, you know, whatever. 
That was pretty dramatic. I'm sure you're not like that. But just so you know, if you do anything, even just an eye roll or you know an extra smile or a grimace or you stop playing and you freak out and you, know, you look at someone, all those little things, tip them off. Because if you've got a line of people in a row playing the same exact thing at the same exact time and one person suddenly makes like a facial gesture and they make a face that not everyone else is making, everybody in the audience looks at that person and then if they look unconfident or they look like they stopped playing everybody in the audience tries to figure out what happened hmm well I'm gonna guess because they don't look very confident right now that they messed up and so you're just kinda of bringing that attention to you totally don't have to do that so that's it on hand and you can continue to practice this at home you can get faster and faster you can play it alongside your favorite music you can do all sorts of things with it and I just hope you have fun with it because more of that is coming soon Go ahead and put your sticks down quietly and then take a look at the section of your worksheet that says Rhythm Practice and follow along with me as I read the instructions. Write in the counts to the rhythm exercise below. As a group, practice speaking the rhythm using ta's and tt's in time, counting the rhythm using one, two, and in time, and then clapping the rhythm in time. So first, get out your pencil. Go ahead and look at the time signature. It says four over a quarter note, or ta, so four over ta. Now you probably already know what that means, but in case you don't, I'm just gonna give you a quick little reminder here. It means there are four ta's in each measure, or four quarter notes in each measure. Just like there's four quarters in a full dollar, there are four of these quarter notes, or ta notes, in each dollar, or in each measure. So we're gonna look here. We've got one, two, three, four quarter notes. One of the quarter notes has been split into two equal parts, which are called eighth notes, or your TT. So with the same amount of space that you have your ta, 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 two TTs fit right inside that space. Ta, 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 ti, 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 ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. Does that make sense? Great. So where you've got one, two, three, and four, you're now going to write in that same rhythm, practice writing it in the next two measures. And when you have that and, go ahead and just write a plus sign instead of any funny like word or ampersand or anything special. We want to get used to seeing that plus sign. When you're done, set down your pencil and we'll keep going. So let's follow the next part of the instructions. We're going to speak this using ta's and tt's. All of those quarter notes, or the single notes with the stem, are our ta's. We're going to say ta. And then all of the eighth notes, which are the notes with the stem that's connected with a beam, we're going to say tt. So here we go. All together, we're going to speak all three measures. One, two, ready, go. Ta, ta, tt, ta. Ta, ta, tt, ta. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. How'd you do? I imagine you did well. Now just so you know, I'm snapping here to keep our steady beat. You don't need to snap, you're just gonna speak it. Another great way to keep time is with a metronome. This is what musicians use from beginning to advanced to professionals. And that's how they keep time. And basically it clicks for you. And that's your beat. So basically what this beat is, is when you stop at the stoplight and there's that cool guy in the car next to you blasting his music and it's like boof, 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 boof. That beat that you're feeling, it's the beat for the metronome. So this metronome is at 100 beats per minute right now. What that means is every 60 seconds or one minute, this will click 100 times. If I turn it up to 144 beats per minute, that means that when every 60 seconds it will click 144 times with equal space in between each one. It's pretty cool. So this metronome is now going to take the place of my snapping so I don't have to snap anymore. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the worksheet. We're going to do that same thing, but instead of saying ta and tt, we're going to use the counts, which is the numbers that you see underneath those notes. So all of your ta's are now going to become numbers, one, two, or four, and your tt will become three and. It will sound the same, ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, one, two, three, and four. The rhythm is the exact same. We're going to keep time with our metronome instead and say different things with our mouth in the exact same rhythm. Here we go. Ready, go. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. 
Did you say it with me? Awesome. Now this next time, we're going to use something called a backtrack. This is something that I've created for my students to practice with because sometimes playing with a metronome can make you go a little crazy in the beginning because you just click, 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 over and over and over and you start freaking out because there's this nervous click in the background it's making you crazy. Kind of like when you have a drop in the sink and it just keeps going and going and going. Okay, metronomes are a really great way to practice and I totally think that you should do it someday. But what I've done for my students is I created electronic background music that's in time, that's, it's electronic so it is in time, with something like a metronome, but it's a little bit more fun in the background. So we're going to play with one of the backtracks I created, and it will also be at 100 beats per minute. Here we go. You ready? You'll get four clicks from the metronome, and then the backtrack will begin, and we'll begin counting with the numbers. Ready? One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Okay, have you become a pro at this rhythm yet? Awesome. Look at the next section on your worksheet. It says sticking practice. Now follow along with me while I read it out loud to you. Copy the first measure sticking under the next two measures, using a pencil of course. Make sure that they're exactly the same. That means that if it says right under the first note, you write right under the first note. Quietly in the air, practice playing the rhythm with the new stickings. Did you catch that? It said quietly in the air. That doesn't mean loudly on your neighbor's head or anything like that. It means quietly in the air. <laughs> okay, and then once you've mastered it in the air and you know that you are a total pro at this rhythm with the correct stickings, we're going to play it as a group on your bucket or trash can. So, here we go. Looking at the sticking, get out your pencil and you're going to write in the R's for your right hand and the L's for your left hand. And I'll pause for a second and I'll see you when you're done. Remember, put that pencil down when you're done so we know we can move on. Okay, great. So you're already pro at this rhythm because you've already practiced it on taws and TTs and with a metronome and with counts and all this stuff. It's the same exact rhythm. But now we're going to add our sticks to the mix. And you are practicing it in the air. You probably just finished doing that. So let's do it one time together in the air to make sure we're all doing the same exact thing. Here we go. One, two, red, go. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Did you get that TT is both on the right hands? So it's right, left, right, right, left. Say that with me one time while we play it. Ready, and right, left, right, right, left. Excellent. Now let's play it on the bucket. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. You might say, but it's easier to play it this way, and it might have a different sticking, or, but I could do it this way too. That's awesome. Right now, in this music, this section says it's sticking practice. It's practice following the stickings that are written. So we want to make sure that everybody is doing right, left, right, right, left. We're going to play this with a metronome now. Let me grab it. Here we go. I think we can go a little faster than 100. Let's do 104. Here we go. I'll put this on my music stand. One, two, on the bucket. Now, did you practice full strokes when you played those two notes in a row on the TT or on the three and? Or did, were they short and disconnected? You don't want them to be short and disconnected. You want them to be nice, smooth, full strokes. The other thing that we can be focusing on, which we learned in eight, a hand, or eight on a hand earlier, is that our other stick we're not using can stay down. Let's try it one more time on the bucket with the metronome, and we're going to focus on keeping that opposite hand down and making sure that those TTs or three and the two notes you play on the same hand in a row, are nice and smooth and connected and a nice full stroke. Here we go. I'll start the metronome again at 104 beats per every 60 seconds. Ready, go. Getting better? Remember, that's all we ask, because you get better every single time. We don't expect you to be perfect, just get better every time you try. So again, we can do this with the backtrack, but I want to move forward a little bit. So making music, look at the next part of your worksheet. 
Follow along with me as I read it to you. Use your mind to figure out the legend below. Quietly raise your hand once you've experienced that aha moment. Then play the music on your buckets and cans as a group. So the legend is the part there on the left hand side that says everything on this space with the arrow says rim. And everything on this space, on the bottom space with the arrow right there, is on the center of the drum. So if we are, have looked at our bucket anatomy, or the different parts of the bucket, the center is right here. This is the rim, and this is the side. So we've got center, rim, side. So everything with the X on the second space down, you play on the rim. Everything on the bottom space with the regular no head it says center, you play it in the center. Now go ahead and take a look at the stickings here and see if you can figure out the pattern. And once you figure out what the genius plan is here, raise your hand so that we know that we're ready to play. Okay, does everybody get what we're doing? So we've got the counts already done, we've practiced that a million times. We've got all of the sticking down correctly, we've practiced that a million times. And now we're going to make music out of it. Here we go. Ready? One, two, ready, go. Do you see how everything that we just did totally worked with this music? Exactly. We're just building it up to make music. Let's try it again. One, two, a little faster. Yeah, piece of cake. Now if you want to keep repeating that over and over, I totally recommend it. You can practice getting faster as a group or slower as a group. The key here is for everyone to play it together because it's not a race. The tricky part about music is being able to do it all together. That's why music is an awesome team activity. So after you've practiced this, you maybe you want to pause it right now and keep doing that together, or maybe you're ready to move on, we're going to go to the bonus challenge. So everyone take your left hand and put it behind your back. And with your right hand, we are going to play the entire thing on the bucket. So that means our right hand plays all of the center parts and all of the rim parts. I think you can handle it. Here we go. One, two, full strokes, go! How'd you do? You want to try it on the other hand? Let's try it. One, two, one, two, ready, go. Did you catch that release note I played at the end? Yeah, it was just a little like, and we're done. Exactly, that's what release notes are for, and I think they're pretty fun. So you've completed lesson one of the Hey song for buckets. And if you have any more questions about this, you know, feel free to email me. There's more information below this video. And remember that we don't expect you to be perfect. We just ask that you get better every single time by focusing on those little things that you can add to it to make it even better. I'll see you in our next lesson.